Aloha, everybody. Aloha. I told Faye that I would try and memorize my short speech unless I got stage fright. So I'm going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mahalo, David, for the introduction. I, I really appreciate it. And I, I want to say something about uh, Dr. McEwen. Dr. McEwen has improved the quality of everybody's life in here. He has improved the quality of life of everybody who lives in Hawaii. He's not only a superb uh, physician, but he's worked tirelessly in politics, behind the scenes, making things happen with, with little accolade. Um, and the amazing thing about it is, is David, Dr. McEwen is a fairly new, newly admitted U.S. citizen. So I've been a citizen for about four years. So thank you, David. And as David said, he was the uh, co-founder of the Life Foundation, the AIDS Foundation of Hawaii on Oahu. And those were lonely, lonely days in the beginning. Um, at the beginning, we didn't even know, there was no word for AIDS. It was, uh, you know, a, a mystery disease. David was able to head off the AIDS crisis that a lot of other places had. Panic and sit in, in Hawaii because of that. Thank you. And I want to acknowledge the executive director of the Life Foundation, Mr. Paul Grosbeck, who said we were going to be I also want to say a, a special mahalo to the civil rights, uh, friends of civil rights, especially Craig Kennedy and A.B. Agbiani. Thank you so much. And for the Dr. Martin Luther King Award, I feel humbled being among such honorees and such former honorees. And just a little footnote, Kat Brady used to be my secretary about 25 years ago. <laughs> When I was at KK, between the ages of 7 and 12, my family lived in Florida. I saw segregation. Even as a youngster, I could see it was unfair and wrong. When I was 7, I remember being in Verdine's department store with my mother, which was, and I saw the uh, white and colored drinking fountain, as Betty Joe mentioned, side by side. And I said to my mother, oh, I want to drink from the colored drinking fountain. <laughs> because to me, colored drinking fountain meant colored water, and colored water meant Coca-Cola. <laughs> and when my mother explained to me what that was about, I thought to myself, how, how silly. Why do that? And there was a time when people were not treated equally in society because of the way they were. There was a time when people were not treated equally before the law, before the law because of who they were. There, were. there was a time when people were set upon violently, sometimes fatally, for what they were. And that time was then, and that time is now. It's against people who are attracted to the same gender, the LGTB community. Every day you hear about some tragedy that has befallen somebody who has stood up for civil rights for the gay community. Uganda, immediately, yesterday. Very often I hear liberal-minded and other people make a statement and sometimes a supportive statement. Well, oh, it's okay to choose to be gay. Well, I want you to know, and I want you to support this when you leave this room, that being gay is not a choice. I 
think we all remember puberty and slowly becoming aware of being attracted to the girl or the boy in class. Never had that type of feeling before. Do you ever remember choosing this? No? It just was. It was just part of you. Never question it. Being a teenager and being gay is very, very lonely. Most of the times you can't go to your parents, you can't go to your relatives, you can't go to your grandparents, you can't go to your teachers, you can't go to your counselors, and usually you can't even go to your church. In school, it's bag at this and bag at that. Your friends, when they're describing things that aren't cool and are, are bad, oh, that's so gay. Being a, person, being a person who's gay is the worst thing that you could be. Because what you want to do is you want to fit in. You don't want to be different. And many times, the choice is death. I had a great grandmother who died at 95 when I was 16. She attended school in England. She was left-handed. Society and therefore her school stated that she thought that she should be right-handed. They tied her left hand behind her back because they knew they could make her choose to use her right hand. Because it was right, right? When she died, the predominant hand was her left hand. So much for repressing the innate. It usually doesn't work, at least not in a good way. In other words, conversion therapy does not work. <laughs> we should all continue to have the dream, to have the Martin Luther King's dream as well. We should dream that people will be judged by the content of their character and not by who they love. All persons are created equal. I hope and I know that the prejudice that we experience today will seem as silly and as useless as those white and colored drinking fountains were back that I saw in my youth. Thank you very much. And now the recipient of the Martin Luther King Jr. Awards, Mr. Jack Law. For our final...